universal, modular, stackable, all in one one click omelidou fromage, whatever you can think of. Yes, there are a lot of community names for blueprint factories in Satisfactory. As it turns out, different names actually mean different things. There are very different types of blueprint factories when it comes to form and function in Satisfactory. So today in this video, I want to cover every possible type of Satisfactory blueprint factory and explain how those types actually work. From small single print factories, through big stackable installations, to huge mega projects with dozens of blueprints. We'll get them all. In the last six months, I have been playing Satisfactory quite different. When it comes to every single task, I try to make it happen with the power of Blueprint Designer. I think I have designed hundreds of factories for this purpose. Cannot be so sure. But I am pretty sure that I have shared over several dozen blueprints on this channel for free. And my first victim on this bizarre adventure was the idea of personal storage factory. You know, on the one side you connect iron ore, then you connect the power, and then get several items for personal use on the other side. And for the better results, you fit a container for every item inside of the blueprint. For example, in this most recent iteration of Iron Factory, I have managed to produce and store reinforced iron plates, rotors, module frames, and every single precursor item. Yes, with some soft clipping tricks, compact manifolds, and alternative recipes, you can get quite far away. And this is the prime example of so-called one-click factory. It is a self-sufficient loop with everything on board, well outside of raw resources and power. Some may even call it as, well, all-in-one factory. And in some cases, you can be a bit sneaky sneaky, well, with the way how you design those factories. One click is, well, technically incorrect term, because, well, you will definitely spend a dozens of clicks setting up so-called one-click factory. But what if you treat this dozen-click factory as a base module with possible expansion? Well, for even more clicks. Here is an example of all-in-one steel factory that do not produce heavy module frames on board, but it still produces every precursor item for heavy module frames. Nevertheless, it lacks the manufacturer for heavy module frames itself. Instead, you place one single manufacturer into the socket with existing connection points on top of the factory. Nice! Well, putting things into the sockets, quite a male thing to do. So now, with established baseline for socket development, we can start expansion of stubby stubby things into something a bit longer. Hey! To some extent, personal storage factories can be one click all in one blueprints. And even then, they can devolve into dozens of clicks with not everything on board. But when you get into real game, like filling up space elevator milestones or unlocking tiers, you need to go bigger and often way smarter. Simple 4x4, just not enough most of the time. So here is my very old blueprint for production of 22.5 reinforced iron plates per minute. You connect iron, copper, coal and power. As a result, you get your reinforced iron plates, 22.5 per minute. Simple design with a little twist. It is missing one wall. Well, this blueprint can be mirrored with the same blueprint back to back and they create one single building with production of 45 reinforced iron plates per minute. All connections are separate, but visually it is two stacked blueprints into a single building. With this approach, you can go even further and remove another wall from the blueprint to create four-way symmetry. So this is how you can stack four blueprint factories into one single building. This is a very interesting way of making full exteriors with only two walls in the Blueprint Designer. But there is a small downside to stackable system like this. There are four separate sets of connections. Not convenient. This is why you can be a bit smarter and just make vertical stacking instead of horizontal. But for this we will need to use manifolds. Manifold is a type of connection where you do not split items evenly on the belts but instead you make chained connection. Downside of this connection is wind-up time. It can take literal hours to reach balance point for the manifold system, where load balancing instead can actually work from the start. But manifolds are compact. And if you stop thinking about manifolds in terms of separate machines and belts inside of the factory, well, we can treat blueprint factories itself as the chain links of the bigger manifold. Here is an example of smart plating skyscraper. This skyscraper is stuck from one single blueprint. It is very simple design with assemblers. 
This factory takes rotors with reinforced iron plates and makes smart plates for the space elevator. Where it gets more interesting is the set of connections. There is a separate maintenance shaft with conveyor lift outlets. At the bottom of the blueprint, you connect reinforced iron plates and rotors. Then, those items go through all the assemblers inside of the factory and what is left goes out on the top with another set of outlets. Then, you just connect top outlets of the first blueprint to the bottom outlets of the second blueprint. So this way you can stack blueprints vertically until you run out of the belt capacity. And if you wonder about smart plating output, well those items just actually go into the reverse direction. As simple as that. So in the simple terms, you just weave your items on a single belt through several blueprint factories stacked vertically. So as you can see, stackable blueprints and skyscrapers with manifold design are quite easy to understand. Now let's crank up the difficulty. Alright, now we are in the land of universal blueprints. Technically, they are stackable as previous blueprints. But there is a twist. At some point, bell capacity can be not enough and you want to connect more items to higher blueprint stacks. For example, you want to stack 3 blueprints vertically and you want to connect 3 lifts with 270 iron ore for every single stack. 810 items cannot fit even on the Mark V belt. Also, aiming lifts to ordinary set of outlets, well, it can be a bit puzzling. And the first idea would be simple outlet adjustment for every blueprint stack. Just shift connection point for every stack and it sounds reasonable, but in this manner you make 3 different blueprints, 3 different entries, 3 different names and this is just a minor deviation. Not ideal. Let's make something better. Here, you can upgrade your blueprints to the status of universal blueprints. And for this, we will need to make omnidirectional inputs. Sounds ominous, but actually it's quite simple. In the simple omnidirectional system, there are a total of three outlets with the belts. And they just merge together with a simple merger. So what's the point? Well, any of three connections will funnel resources into the factory itself. This allows us to connect first conveyor lift to outlet A, second lift can go for the outlet B, but this outlet B would be outlet on the second vertical stack. And when it comes to the lift C, well, we have the perfect line for outlet C on the third blueprint stack. So, this is only one blueprint, but we have three different opportunities to connect three different lifts in three different points. Only extra tool you will need are simple conveyor lift holes as the extension tool. Well, since conveyor lifts, uh, well, they have their vertical limits. Once again, there is only one blueprint with three possible connections that result in the same result regardless. So this is why it is universal. You do not need to make small adjustments for every factory floor. It is universal. This is how you can make vertical stacks with way bigger capacity. And to make things worse, I just apply four-way symmetry to this factory, so this is not only vertically stacked universal factory, but it's also horizontally stacked four-way factory. And by the way, did I mention that every vertical stack have reinforced iron place output with a built-in manifold? Uh, yeah, your head hurts. Good. Uh, so you think it would get simpler from here? Nope. So far, we have been talking about single factory blueprints with different modes of operation. But what if our goal requires several blueprints to work in tandem? Probably the easiest example can be found with my universal modular concrete factory. So what's up with the modular part? Well, there are three different modules or blueprints. One module to cover miner and redirect limestone to the set of outlets, second module to do all the production and the third module on the roof for simple aesthetic reasons. So in theory there are like three types of ore density, there are three types of belts, there are Mark 3, Mark 4, Mark 5 and there are two types of miners, Mark 2 and Mark 3. So this is like in theory 18 combinations, in reality it would be less, but still it's a bit ridiculous. And at this stage of the video, we are not normal in any regard. And we have explored the idea of omnidirectional inputs. Good thing about Mark III belts, that two Mark III belts can cover capacity of single Mark IV, or three Mark III can cover capacity of single Mark V. So, if we apply omnidirectional inputs and outputs with Mark III belts, as long as we are stuck in factory enough times vertically, then we are covered with Mark III belts, even with Mark III miners and Mark V belts. 
When you want to upgrade, you just add extra stack of, well, production module, and we need to upgrade miner and point of origin belts. So the side benefit of stackable universal factory like this is the ability to place just enough stacks for every combination and stage without wasting extra machinery. Make one stack for early stages and impure nodes, make two stacks for Mark IV belts and normal nodes, and then upgrade to three stacks with Mark III miners and Mark V belts. So, as you can see, we have explored several simple ways of horizontal stacking. Then we explored vertical stacking with built-in manifolds. Then we added omnidirectional inputs for vertical stacking and combined it with horizontal stacking. Natural expansion of this was to implement every single bit with modular factories. Alright, over here we have pure ingot skyscraper. This super efficient recipe is well alternative recipe. For example, with this recipe, one can convert 780 copper ore into almost 2000 copper ingots per minute. Quite impressive. But there is the opportunity cost in form of all the refineries taking up a lot of space. At some point, I have decided to make module a blueprint with a universal production module. I really wanted it to be a skyscraper with minimal overclocking and the ability of expansion all the way to pure copper node and Mark III miner. This is already in the department of Mark V belts when we are dealing with the output of copper ingots, since well, global output of this factory would be 1950 copper ingots and this require at least 3 Mark V belts. While something like this is easy with small amount of stacks, it gets a bit harder with total of like 27 refineries and 9 blueprint stacks. And this is like after overclocking. One of the solutions was to make connections on every side of the blueprint. But this looks awful and too utilitarian. And 18 plus connections pose an extra challenge of its own. Instead, I divided stacking into three logical parts. This universal blueprint have three omnidirectional inputs and three omnidirectional outputs. In normal universe, this allow only for three vertical stacks, but we can actually do nine. Why? Well, over here, every blueprint outlet with omnidirectional thingy thingy have a built-in manifold, and this alone allow to stack three blueprints together by only using one outlet at a time. And technically this is like 3 stacks stacked together 3 times for a total of 9 blueprint stacks. As a metaphor, you can think about this factory as a root system with 3 stems, where well every stem house 3 flowers in a chain, and the flower is your single universal blueprint. So as you can notice, even in like simple low level factory, it can become well, a logical puzzle. And if you like puzzles, well, I think you'll like Blueprint Modular Factory Mega Projects. Before we get into more modular blueprints, I want to mention several interesting combinations of modules with vertical and horizontal stacking. Over here, you are looking at heavy modular frame factory with global production of 22.5 heavy modular frames per minute. It is horizontal factory and can stack up 4 times in one axis. Then it is being mirrored to increase total amount of stacks to 8. Really nice way of making not so complex, but quite big factories with uniform exterior. Then over here we have very advanced rubber and plastic factories. Both factories have a lot of machinery and require two separate modules for full production cycle. Two different modules stuck together back to back and have central maintenance shaft to maintain all internal connections. After this, this dual module can be stacked horizontally as part of single belt manifold. And there's the obvious possibility of vertical stacking as long as you have extra oil and space for all the belts and piping on the building sides. Inside of the blueprint, output have two belts with connection and simple splitter plus merger logic. This way, any side of the blueprint can be a functional output. So in a sense, this system is a simple two-directional output. For the top and sides of the factory, I am using simple decorative blueprint modules and this is it. Not a lot of things, but well, still quite interesting. Yet another simple but interesting combination is this computer factory. It is simple horizontal stack of two modules. Bottom and top blueprint are the part of one internal chain with convenient set of connections on the back. And connections on the sides are, well, the simple connections on the side, just a manifold. And now we have final mega project to cover. While we explored very elaborate combination of module factories, sometimes something a bit simpler can be way larger in scope. 
This building consists from 24 separate unique blueprints. Better yet, it is a combination of 6 completely separate production chains. Every chain is 4 blueprints on top of each other. This is the biggest and the most complete personal storage factory that I have ever built. It even has the full set of weapons on board, even the new Knobelisks. So technically this is like, what, 6 separate towers that are just merged together and every separate tower is different production chain with all the items, like for example one chain is for electronics, another chain for the steel items, another for like bio waste materials. So it is actually quite simple when you break it down in the chunks, into the modules. And you know like the most hard part of making this blueprint or blueprint factory or module factory, whatever you call it at this point, well it was to make all the new connections to line up for easy external connection. That mean the fluids, power and even conveyor lift holes. So as you can see, even huge mega projects are often way simpler than it looks. While very easy low tier factory can be burdened by a ridiculous amount of complexity. The choice is yours. Something about 90% of blueprints featured in this video have been shared on this channel for free. Just check out the video library on my channel to find detailed video explanations and download links for every system and factory. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. Thank you very much for watching and once again huge thanks to all channel members supporting creation of these videos. Have a nice one and Yakis out!